Before you get started with the video today, let's talk about how to use these videos. There's eight parts to what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to create some tables. We're going to create relationships between those tables. We're going to create some forms with multiple table sources, our invoice. We're going to format that invoice so it prints well. We're going to add some more controls. We're going to create a query to sort the data for finding overdue invoices. Finally, we're going to create a report. And then the application will be finalized, removing all menus and creating a navigation form. And so you'll be done with a nice application that looks like this. It's a program that would run a small business that we're going to use. This one's called Crystal Pools. It keeps track of our customers, it keeps track of our invoices, it keeps track of our products that we're selling, and it keeps track of who sells them to us, and also creates reports so that we can see who has not paid our bills. The teacher here is me, Shad David Sluter. I work as a teacher in Tullison Union High School District at Westview High School. You can use these lessons to follow along. So eight videos, do exactly as the videos show, duplicating on your own screen. And finally, when you're done, instead of printing the application, we're simply going to grade it as a standalone program. Now let's get going. Welcome to video number three for Access 2013. What you see on the screen is where we're going in this video. We're going to add some invoices to our program so that way we can tell customers that they can order things. Let's talk for a minute about invoices or receipts. Whenever you buy something from a company, they give you either a receipt or an invoice, which is a record of what you bought. What we're interested in building this time is a form that looks like the invoice, and we want to know, we have to know, where does this information come from in the design of our program? And so these arrows here tell us where this comes from. First of all, on the invoice, the name of the customer and the address is listed there. So you've seen that before, that's in the customer table. Secondly, each invoice will have its own item in a record. We're going to create an invoice table. It will store the date, the invoice number, and the customer ID. Then below, we're going to create another table called the invoice details. Just think of how this would work. Every invoice has multiple lines to it. And so anytime you have one thing that owns many things, that means there's a relation between two tables. And so in this case, we're going to create a, a table called the invoice details. And in every record of the invoice details table, there will be an item. So it'll be the product. It will be the labor, it'll be the price, and so invoice details is going to have some information there from the products table. Then at the bottom, these are not actually tables, these are calculated fields, and so we'll be able to do some formulas to calculate the tax and the shipping. And so there is some information about what we will design next in an invoice. So let's go through an example of what it will look like when we're done. I have a form here that says we're going to create some invoices. So let's start with just choosing a new invoice. Invoice date. Let's pick something like Saturday. And the customer ID. You'll see I'll be able to pick a list of customers. Automatically we'll fill in the fields. And then down below we will see what the person actually wants to buy. So I will choose a drop down item and we'll start selecting some things. I'm going to choose one of those. I'm going to buy a some LG killer and one of those and an eight foot hose. Let's get two of those and then one more item uh, this plastic filter. And so you can see that this is the fourth invoice I've created with the program. On the date, the customer ID, the person's name, and then the details below of what they bought. So how are we going to do this? Let's back up to where our database is right now. What you see on the screen now is where you are at after video number two. We are going to add some new tables so that we can create invoices. And so the table that we're going to create is going to be called invoice. So I'm going to click create a table first thing I want to do is change this to design view. The table name, let's call it invoice. 
what is in the invoice table? Well, first of all, we need an invoice ID. In this table, we will also like to keep track of who the customer is. So the customer ID, this is called the foreign key. This will tell us which number to look for in the customer table. So I'm going to choose the data type to be number. So it will match the customer number in the field. Also, we're going to need to know what is the date of this purchase. And they have a field here called the time and date field, which will give us a date format. So these are the three fields that we're going to use in our invoice table. We're going to create another table called the invoice line items, which will show lots of details of each invoice. So let's go to the create button again and choose table. Let's name this table and call it the invoice line items. Let's do a right click and choose the design view. What do we need what do we need to keep track of in the line items? Well, first of all, we're going to have to remember invoice line item ID. We'll keep track of each line item in a separate uh, separate record. This should be associated with the invoice. Now an invoice ID is a number, so let's change that to number. We're going to also want to know what products what products is this person purchasing? So this is a number. The last item we'll keep track of is the quantity. How many did the per person buy in each line item? Let's save this. Now this will make more sense when we go to the database tools and look at the relationships. You remember earlier that we created products and vendors and we linked those two tables. Now we're going to add the other tables to our lists. So I'm going to right click and choose show table. We're going to add the customer table, the invoice table, and the line item table. We need to close the invoice and the design view of the other. Let's take the customer table, match the ID of the customer to the customer ID in the invoices. We're going to enforce referential integrity. We're going to say that there are many to one. Create. Now you notice here there's another link. We have the invoice ID associated with the line items. Once more we will create another link between these two tables. There's a link here between the product ID in every line item and we're going to look up those in the product tables. So this time we're going to drag from the right to the left and create these as a join. So now all of the tables in our database are linked together. Let's review what they are. The customer table. Every invoice is associated with a customer. One customer has many different invoices, and so they have a customer ID. Every invoice has many line items, and so the invoice ID is associated with many different line items. In every invoice line item, there's going to be a mention of a product. That's what an, an invoice does, is sell us products. And so the product ID will be mentioned many times here. And then, of course, each product has a vendor. So this whole thing now ties together into one related database. Let's save the relationships. Now that we have the relationships between these tables defined, we can create forms to show the invoice. 
So I'm going to select the invoice table and create a new form. Let's go to create and choose the form wizard button. I'm going to show all the data from the invoice table. I'd also like to know who the customer name is, so let's go to customer last name, first name, all the information. We don't need the data of the ID number on the form twice, so I'll leave that out. We will need to know the invoice line items. That's what I'm looking for, the invoice line items. This will create a subform. So let's add all of these. Let's go to the invoice line ID, and the product ID, and the quantity. If we have the product ID, that's nice, but we need to know the name of the product. So let's go to the product table where the description is stored and the sale price. And let's go to next. We're going to have this create a form with subforms. And let's go to tabular. Let's call this our invoice form and finish. So now we have the invoice form created. It needs some help. There's some things cut off here and the invoice line items are going to be cut off as well. This is too narrow. We can make the form wider. So let's go into the design mode. Let's right click on the tab that says invoice form and let's go to design view. The first thing we can do is widen the table. Widen the form I should say. And let's take the sub form and drag it by its little handle. Stretch it wider. Some of these items are too wide, like description. Let's make that smaller. Sale price needs to move over. The idea is to fit all of this on one page. That looks like it's going to fit. Okay, let's go back into form view. So now we have the invoice form in front of us. How to create a new record? Well, the invoice ID, we could type something in there or down at the bottom is a little button that says new blank record. Let's click there. And now it's ready to create a new invoice. So let's press tab. Which customer is going to get our first sale? Let's put in a random number like seven and press tab. Automatically, we found out that Graciela Goins is our first customer. So she is customer ID 7. We could change that to a 5 and press tab and change it to Letty. So whoever, whoever is related to the number is who you get into these fields. Let's pick a date for our sale. Let's do Saturday. And now let's go down to the line items. What is Letty going to buy today? So let's click in the first line item here and press tab we would have to know her product numbers. So both the customer ID number and the product ID are a little bit awkward. It would be nice if we had a drop down list. So instead of picking five and knowing that it belongs to Letty, that there would be a drop down where we could see a list of customer names. We'll do that in the next video. But for now, we're just choosing numbers. So product ID. Well, let's type in one. What was the first product? And we'll buy one of those. Oh, look at there. It's one gallon of the muriatic acid. And let's go to the next item. She's going to buy product ID number five and buy one of those, and that's the AutoVac. Let's scroll down a bit and move to the right. You can see the price for each of these items. And the last item she's going to buy is item number 54 on the list. She's going to buy one of those. There is no item 54. Let's try item 33. There we go. Another kind of thing that we sell at the store. And so we've created some items on her invoice. Let's click the next button for the next record. And now we're ready for a new invoice. Let's close the invoice form. And go look at the invoice table. What have we been doing? Well, so far I've created three invoices. Let's see what the details are on invoice number three, the one that we just worked with. You can
can see that there are three line items, three products that are there. And so we would have to know what those product items are. Let's go to look at the invoice line items. ID. You could follow all these things through. They don't make much sense to a human. They're all index numbers. Once you look at the customer form, though, they, are, they hopefully make some sense.